Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Advisor. Today, I'm so excited because we have a very special guest. She is part of our podcast community. She has her own podcast on The Advisor. So if you go on to The Advisor, you'll see her podcast there. She has great podcasts that help you overcome lots of things. She teaches you about wellness, renewing, transformation. She shows you all different ways to help yourself become the better you. And today, she is here today. And she is the founder of Red House Wellness. And she is a wonderful person. She is actually, she her, uh, Red House Wellness has retreats. That she, and she is here to tell you a little about herself and about uh, well, well House Wellness retreats. But her focus today is really unique. She's going to focus on talking about breath work, the importance of it. And she has a unique way of going about it that could actually help you change yourself into a better person and help you overcome a lot of different things. And she's going to go more into that today. And she's going to talk about transformation. And it's just an amazing conversation. So put your ear on and listen carefully, because when you finish with this podcast, you are going to be blown away and you are going to have so many different tools, techniques to use to make yourself a better more vibrant person so you can live a healthy, happy, and productive life. So Sherry, take it away. Ah, Stacy, thank you so much. That was a wonderful introduction. So right now, as I start talking to you, I'm going to take a deep exhale. And go ahead and take it with me, Stacy. Just exhale. And now let's take a full deep breath in. Just inhale. And exhale. So what we've just done is we've caught, calmed the nervous system. We've relaxed our mind. We've calmed our body. In those couple of seconds, we've lowered our heart rate and our blood pressure. And we're going from the fight flight way of being to the restore and rejuvenation. And your breath, inhaling and exhaling, can do that. And breath work is just intentional breathing that you control the pace of the breath. It's free. It's always with you. It's always available. And I feel my breath is right there saying, Sherry, use me. I'm here. I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. So when we get stressed and we have an anxiety and we're worried about a lot of things, we tend to breathe from the chest and our breath gets very shallow. <gasps> oh my God, what's happening? That's a stressful mood. I can't believe this. I got to be up in five minutes and I'm not ready. And I got to get out the door. And you're, you're, you start talking fast. Your heart rate goes up. Your blood pressure goes up and your breath. So the first thing you can do when you notice that is before you even take a breath, this is why I say exhale. Also sigh. Let's sigh together right now, Stacy. So take a little breath in, open your mouth and sigh. Ah. Good, Stacey. I want to hear you again. Inhale. And just sigh. Ah. So you're incorporating the physical, the emotional, and the mental aspects of your body to tell your body, you're okay. You are okay. And when you know you're okay internally, mm -hmm. everything on the outside world looks a little bit better. You're able to cognitively make better decisions you're able to make decisions that right are for you that are right for you. You're able to come from a place of kindness. I feel when my breath gets very high and I'm breathing fast and I can't think straight, I tend to bark and I tend to re react yes. instead of respond. So when I slow my breath, even right now talking to you, and I that everything is a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. the breath so I'm going to tell you a couple different breathing exercises 
One I'd like to share with you, it's called 16 seconds. 16 seconds to calmness. And my, my meditation teacher, David G, does this 16 seconds. So if you're out and about and you have stress and you have anxiety or you're thinking about something that's going over and over and over in your mind that's bothering you, I want you just to take a breath. We're going to inhale for four. Inhale. Your belly goes out. Two, three, four. Now hold it and just witness and watch as the air is circulating. And now exhale for four. One, two, three, four. And hold that. One, two, three. Four. In 16 seconds, you can go from chaos to calmness. Now, we weren't really in a stressful situation, you and I, Stacy, because you're sitting there very calm. I can see you and I'm sitting here sharing what I love. So I'm in a state of passion and, and enthusiastic and, and I'm excited to teach and to learn. But if you were in a stressful situation, you could see how 16 seconds, you inhale for four. And as you hold, you just witness and watch and just be exhaling for four. And then just being here for four more counts. That's one way. Another breathing technique that I love, it's called the four, seven, eight. And Dr. Andrew Wise, he's the one that designed that. And this is excellent. This is when you want to really relax. And I do this when I wake up in the middle of the night. Do you ever wake up, Stacy, in the middle mm -hmm. of the night with a lot of thoughts going? Okay, oh. I do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. when I have a big thing going on the next day or I'm getting ready to go on a wellness retreat and I think, oh my gosh, did I do this? Did I do this? So yeah. I do the four, seven, eight. So I can do it with me. We're going okay. to inhale, I'll tell you first, we're going to inhale from the count of four through our nose. We're going to hold for seven. Then we're going to open our mouth and go for the count of eight. Okay, so we'll do it with me. Okay, okay. inhale for four. One, through your nose, two, three, four. And then just hold. One, two, just be three, four. Five, six, seven, and then exhale. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And when I do that two or three times, I go right back to sleep. Breathing intentionally calms every cell in every muscle and every inside your soul, your heart, your circulatory system, it relaxes, it releases, it restores, and it tells you that you're in a safe place to move forward. Mm -hmm. And that's why breath work is so important. Do you feel calmer now? Oh, most definitely. And I really love the one about waking up in the middle of the night because I've done that many times where I've had a lot to do the next day and subconsciously, even though I'm asleep, it's in my head. And I wake up with a little anxiety because I know I got to get X, Y, and Z done. Now I'm going to try that breath work the next time that happens to me because I did feel a lot calmer. Each exercise made me feel very relaxed and it made me feel a state of calmness yes and that's why i think yoga has become so popular because it's the mind the body and the breath so mm -hmm. the other day someone was asking me what is the difference i mean people know between meditation and breath work yeah breath work is instant relief mm -hmm. that's the beauty of it instant relief 
So next time something's happening or you start, you feel inside like your stomach because we have that body connection, Mm -hmm. mind body connection, where you start to get a stomach ache or you get a little nervous, you're unsure of something. So your stomach hurts or a certain part of your body. Instant relief would be exhaling, sighing, doing 16 seconds. Also, it's called box breath. You might have heard it called box breath. The same as what we did. Inhale for four, hold for four, exhale for four, and hold it. And meditation is mindfulness without judgment. Yes. Because people that tend to judge all the time, which we do naturally, because our brains want to say, if that's pleasurable and that's good, we're going to go there. And if that's going to hurt you and you're going to get punished, we're going to retreat. So we're constantly going like this to figure out how to stay safe. And then when you practice mindfulness with the breath, without judgment, and just letting the thoughts pass and realizing, oh, I had that thought. I'm not going to let it have an emotional charge. Yes. I'm going to take a deep breath and let it go. You'll see how calm your body is and then how alert your mind becomes. The more I use meditation with breath, breath work, I think yeah. the more the smarter I get. I gain a lot of clarity. I get more things done in the day. I have more efficient time. I plan better. I come up with better ideas. I'm more intentional. Everything seems to flow better when I use my breath and I meditate. One more thing, a couple more things I'll share with you. Put your hands on your belly, Stacy. So when you breathe intentionally, you want to inhale and feel your belly come out like a balloon. So inhale, belly goes out. And as you exhale, the belly button goes into the spine. Let's do four of those. Okay. Inhale, belly goes out. Expand, open. And then exhale, belly button goes in. And as we inhale and expand, we're taking in oxygen, filling our body with nutrients and opening up our cells. And as we exhale, we're releasing carbon dioxide and cleansing. So if we're just talking right now and we're not doing intentional breathing, we're breathing. I mean, yes. We don't need to think about it. Right. And when you do the intentional breath, yes, hands on the belly, inhaling, filling your body up, exhaling, coming back down. That's when I think the magic happens. Yes. The first thing that happens when we come into this world is the doctor, whoever like gives you a little tap to get you crying, to get you breathing. <gasps> and the last thing that happens when we pass is people take their last breath. So it is a vital force. Yes. And I read somewhere, and this is your own interpretation, we only have so many breaths on this earth. Yes. Something to think about, something to look at. So I think sometimes when I get very excited, I'm moving very fast and I'm going around, I'm like, yeah. slow down, Sherry. Yes. And start with the breath. Yes. There's another, I'm going to tell you one more, another breathing exercise I love. It is the alternative nostril breathing. Okay. So I want you to put your thumb on your right nostril and your middle, your first finger right here. Okay. And then I want you to inhale. I want you to close your right nostril, close your right nostril, inhale through your left. Four. take your second finger, close the left, open the right and exhale. To the right. Good. Inhale to the right. Close the right. Open the left. Exhale. Inhale to the left. Close the left. 
Exhale to the right. One more time. Inhale to the right. Close the right. Exhale to the left. You did wonderful, Stacy. Here you are leading a podcast, watching me, listening, doing all this amazing. What that does is that balances the feminine and the masculine energy forces inside of us. And the way that I was taught is the feminine side of us is the place in our body of kindness, of giving, of compassion, of taking care of ourselves. It's nurturing, it's kind. And the masculine one is to say, come on, you know, we got to take action. We yeah. not need to do something. We need to move. So sometimes yeah. I'm sitting on the couch and I'm all cuddled. I'm relaxed and I'm reading and I'm really nurturing my feminine side. And I'm like, yeah. it's kind of time to get up. It's kind of time to move. And it's time mm -hmm. to, to do and create the life I want. And that takes action. Creating yeah. what you want takes an action step. So then right. I call on the masculine part of me and I said, okay, Sherry, let's go. Let's get up. So sometimes I just do four or five, you know, you close one side, open, close the other release, and you'll start to feel this energy flow, which we all have. It opens up the chakras, all mm -hmm. breathing opens up the chakras. Right. And then we can just feel like you're in control. Life is happening for you. We've talked about this and not to you. Yes. And I think that's the most amazing thing with breath work is you can control it. You can intentionally bring it to any breath technique you'd like. Yes. And it really calms and stills the body from the chaos to the calmness. Yes. That is amazing. I truly... You know, I truly love breath work. I practice it. You just showed me some techniques that I, I didn't know how to do. And you also showed me like when I, when I would do speaking events, I would, I would do the nostril um, technique of breathing, but I never used the second nostril. Like I was taught a different way. I oh. like that you use the second finger and you glide least goes over it. It, it actually is, is different, but it's better. I like it better than the way I was taught. I, you know, I feel like um, it's all in one. You know, I was taught to, to then move to the second side, not use the second, second, second finger. But I like that because it just, it, it doesn't separate you. Like it, it, it it's all in, it's all, all inclusive, all in one. And it just feels like it, it flows better. I guess that's the way to explain it. And I feel I, that one, you know, the other one is common also, but I like that technique a lot. I, I like the way you did that. I, I really like that way. Oh, I'm so glad that you were able to, util you, that you feel you were utilizing your future because what the breath work is doing, it's balancing us. And like yeah. you said, you worked one side. So when you work both sides and you realize that in order, like right now, if I'm getting a little tired, cause I just, you know, I got up at three o'clock, I flew from the East coast to the West coast. I need to start breathing and moving and making sure that I am a state that I want to be in. So that yes. I can share, that I can teach, that I can give. And that's all with balancing the energy forces and opening the chakras and awakening them. So the chakras yeah. is also with, with the breath and the energy work. I mean, it's all intermingled, mind, body, oh. breath. And yes. that's why at Red House Wellness, with our retreats, our transformation retreats, is we need to look at the physical the emotional, the mental, and spiritual. Yes. And when you tap into each one of those areas and you see where you're thriving, yes. that's really working. Put oh, yourself yeah. in the back. And yeah. where are you struggling? Like, where is that not working? Yeah, And that's where we focus. So through awareness, mm -hmm. you can take an action step Yeah, and work towards well-being work mm -hmm. towards optimal health work yeah. towards creating the life yeah. that we want yeah you know i truly truly believe that we're here 
to thoroughly enjoy and to learn and to serve and to help and to be happy and to get excited and try new things. Yeah. And sometimes world, the world right now is so crazy and it's so polarized with hate and this, and it's, it is, it can be a sad, depressing place to live. And so mm -hmm. I feel the more you learn and know it is our responsibility Yes. To rise up and to teach and to share and to make sure that we smile at each other. Yes. And tell each other you're doing amazing. Yes. And I want to be here for you because our world needs that, especially in trying times like now. Oh, 100%. And a lot of times people do not get recognition. People, even in families, do not compliment each other for the good things that they do. And it's so important. And breathing work is so important. It's a part of transformation because if you incorporate, incorporate breathing you know, techniques into your daily lifestyle, after practicing it, it becomes natural. You could do it anywhere. You could do it when you're outside. You get anxious if you're running around doing errands. You look at the watch and, oh my God, I have to, you know, I have to go home and make dinner, you know, in, in 45 minutes. And then you can feel your heart starting to race or you can feel the anxiety or the warmness in your, in your body because you're starting to get that, that sense of, of nervousness or anxiety. And you could easily just do a couple of breath works in public. Nobody knows and you will start to feel a state of calmness. I remember when I, I was taking care of my aunt, you know, she suffered from anxiety and she suffered, she used to get panic attacks because she was just a worry wart. And one day we're in the supermarket and she starts to get a panic attack. And I, I put, I, I took her over and I, I, we went to the flower shop, you know, like where they make the flowers. And I, I moved some of the flowers aside. I sat her down. And we did the exercise with the one nostril and the other. And we, I did that with her. And then I did another breath technique with her. And she went from anxiety attack to calmness. And then I was like, now stay like this, keep breathing like this. And I will go get the bread and da, 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 you know? And she was just, you know, she went from one extent all the way to the other, all because of the breathing techniques. Yes. And I like to play little games. I think it, 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 so some days, every time I go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. I breathe, inhale, exhale, intentional breathing five mm -hmm. or 10 times. You know, most people, a lot of people have an Apple watch yes. and every hour you're supposed to stand up. Yes. When you stand up, take five deep cleansing breaths. Every Excellent. time the phone rings. So think something in your life that you do on a continuous basis. Have a glass of water, whatever you do a lot of yeah. throughout the day and say, starting right now, I am going to take five intentional deep breaths. And like you said, nobody knows it. I could be talking to you and go, yeah. oh, hi, Stacey, you're so good. Oh, and I'm breathing. Would you like to join me? I have three more breaths. Mm -hmm. And it calms me, it relaxes me, it fills my body with joy, and you help yourself and you help someone else. Yes. So it's something that you need to attach to a habit. You create yes. your habits and your habits create you. Uh, so when you talk about like every morning when you wake up, start it every morning when you wake up, breakfast, lunch, and dinner before you go to bed. If you did it when you woke up, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and at night, that would be five times. Yes. And if you did that 30 days, you would start to see a physical, your body physically would change. Emotionally, you would just get calmer. Yeah. You wouldn't react so much to what others are thinking about, thinking right. about you. You wouldn't take things so personally. Yeah. Mentally, you'd gain clarity. And spiritually, you would see things in a different light. Oh, a hundred percent. And you know, I like the idea of doing it in the morning, doing it for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and before you go to bed. That's you know, what I'm, you're going to do, right? I, oh, I'm going to start. I was just going to say, I'm going to start to incorporate that because when I do my meditation and I do my breathing exercises, and I was just telling you, sometimes I slack a little because I get so involved in other things. But when I do my, my breathing techniques and I do my meditation, 
I feel in a totally different state of mind. I feel like a completely different person. I'm thinking differently. I'm feeling differently. My energy level is different. My concentration, my clarity. I feel like I can conquer the world. You know, all by doing breathing work and meditation, it's so powerful. I don't think people realize how powerful it could be until you start practicing it. And it, you know what? It, and if you do it like that, I never thought about doing it five times a day. I was doing it maybe like once or twice a day, like, you know, in the morning and at night. But to do it five times, I will make that effort. Yes, definitely. Oh, I know that. I want to acknowledge that in you, Stacey, because most of us, you know, have a routine, like we get up and we meditate, we do breathing, we do our little exercise and we're like, okay, I did that for the day. I'm healthy and we move on. And yes. people think if they don't have 15 minutes to do the breath work or 15 minutes of meditation, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And the way that I was taught and from personal experience in helping others, it would be, be better to do it two or three minutes, yeah. five times a day and let your body reap the benefits as we go through life that takes us yeah. up and down with stressful six situations and challenges than 15 minutes in the morning. Yes. That could work for you too. That's just right. a way to practice. But I'd love to see, like you say, to incorporate it throughout your day and tell your bo body and mind, this is now what we do when we start to feel a stressful situation, a challenge, a need that's not being met. When do we get stressed? Right. When something doesn't go our way, when we don't like your personality, we don't like your behavior, you're not doing the way I think it should be done. Yeah. That triggers us. So the yes. more that you can breathe and a breath, I feel is acceptance. Oh, when I yeah. breathe, I accept Yes. Whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether I've done something or not. Yes. You know, that is acceptance. Yes. By taking deep breaths, you're accepting. And when you yeah. can accept this moment right mm -hmm. now, then you can realize that you can have an impact on the next moment. Right. Yeah. It's not so scary. No, it's okay. It's, yeah. yeah. I like that. I like that so much, you know, because we tend to really, you know, we tend to take things, a lot of people tend to take things personally, or you tend to like, you know, you'll, you'll have a disagreement and opinion, but then you'll get so upset, you know, and it could stick with you for days, you know, so, and some people have a very hard time letting go, you know, that's very hard for a lot of people. And, you know, it, you, it's not about, you know, it, if you hold things and you don't let go, it could eat you up alive. Now, you know, I always say, I can't tell you how many times of shows I've said it, 70% of illness is caused by stress. So are we going to let stress get the best of us? Are we going to let stress destroy our lives? Are we going to let stress take control of our lives and destroy it? No. We're going to use techniques like breathing techniques to alter the way we feel, the way we think, the way we act, so we can stay healthy and happy and productive. And when it comes, when you have disagreements with people, I say it's not about let, getting mad because you want to hear them say, I'm sorry. You could forgive them and look at the situation and say, I forgive you, you know, for X, Y, and Z. I understand you were upset. This is what you say to yourself. I forgive you, you know, and you have to just get to the point where you can forgive others for their actions. And you could, you know, you could do this after breath work when you're nice and calm and you can think more clearly and you can just say, I forgive you. You know, you know, we got into a tiff. Maybe I was wrong about this. Maybe you were a little, you know, wrong, you know, maybe you didn't act the right way or say things in the right manner, you know, but whatever the case may be, you could say, I forgive you, you know, and you let it go and just let it go because it's the past and just, you just, you can't change it, but you could say, understand the situation and forgive the person for upsetting you and just move on. But you know what? You can't just do that. Just 
right away. You need something like breath work and meditation to get you to that point where you get to that level where you're able to forgive, you're able to think clearly, you're able to focus. And if you can think clearly and focus, you could do anything. No, well said, Stacy. Well said. It's like right before you're ready to bark or come in strong or retreat, because some people just yeah. ignore, retreat, go back. Yeah. You want to make a conscious choice. Yes. How should I show up in the best version? Yes. And if you don't take a breath and say, let me gain my thoughts. Yes. And I always say, starting with your heart. Yes. If it comes from your heart with kindness, forgiveness, love, compassion with yourself and others, I have no idea if you just had a fight with someone, if you just had an experience that was challenging, if somebody yeah. hurt you and you come in strong, it gives us a place that we have more empathy with each other. Yes. But if you come in strong and then I come in strong and then right. we're like this, nothing's accomplished. Right. So if we could both take a breath or sigh and just be, and then lead from a place of the heart with kindness, I think we'd be able to talk Yes. And we could have disagreements. Right. And we could agree to disagree, but we do it in a respectful way right. that I could honor you and you can honor me. Right. Because it's the like, what is the truth? You have your truth. Yeah. I have my truth. Right. But what is the truth? You know, people that have religion say, this is my truth, but a universal truth. Yeah. Universal truth. What is that? And yes. the way I look at it is to hold two sides of a conversation or an argument, to hold the space for two sides. Yes. Without imposing my belief, my truth. This is the way it's got to be. This is the way I was raised. This is the way my religion says this is the way it is. And to be open for you to express your viewpoint, your belief, your experience, and we can just let it be there. And we might say we agree to disagree. Yes. And I know, though, that we will learn if you're open to say, maybe I haven't thought about it that way. Stacy made a point. I don't know yet if I agree, but maybe I can think about it. And maybe it is a bit kinder than my response. So by breathing mm -hmm. and accepting we come in calmer and softer yes. to be able to let the other person talk and explain and show who they are yes. and why they feel they're important. Because we want everyone to be seen. 100%. And I think that is a very important concept of what truth is and how you can be open to even exploring that. And it yeah. starts, as you said, with a deep breath, inhaling, exhaling to gain some clarity, to gain yeah. some calmness, to activate the brain and the heart that leads with compassion and goodness and not resentment and anger and fighting. Mm -hmm. And it's my way. Yeah. We need to release that. Yes, definitely. Now, when people get into a disagreement and there's, like you said, it's my way or the highway, you know, and you can feel your, your heart starting to beat faster. You could feel starting to get warm because you could feel your blood starting to rise, you know, because you're getting upset. Is there a specific breath work that probably would be the best breath work or all of them are feasible to do? It doesn't matter which one when uh, right away when you're in, in a, a dispute or a, a difference of, of opinion. Is there something you could do right then and there that will bring you from that, you know, and your heart's going like this and you can feel your blood rising and you want to get back to that state of calmness so you could be clear, realistic, calm. And you could have a caring and more, you know, what a better way of expressing your emotion and not 
you know, you know, just say whatever, you know, because you're just, you know, so worked up and they say whatever, and then you regret what you say and so forth. Great question. And I've been studying and reading. And the last study that I just did is you take one breath, a second breath as you inhale, and you just sigh by taking, so you take a short a breath, and when you think you have enough breath, you take one more, Stacy. Oh. So two breaths, inhale. That is the fastest release of physical anxiety, anger, madness. I want to come in. Yeah. It clears the brain, calms the nervous system, relaxes the body the fastest versus the box, 16 seconds, 47A, alternative nostril. Those are all great and intentional. Yeah. And if you want something fast, inhale, one, two, sigh. I like that. That'll be I the fastest way to bring you back. It's almost like if somebody put a little glass of water. You know, if we were fighting and I threw a glass of water in your face, you'd be like, Oh my God, what happened? But you'd step yeah. out of it. You'd be like, oh my God, what are, you know? So that takes your body and your mind to be like, what are you doing? You're yelling, you're screaming. That's not a good place to be in. 100%, yes. Yeah. So two quick breaths and then sigh. <sighs> yeah. Like and then that. you could just think, if you need to think fast or you're in, in a situation where, you know, you could say, excuse yourself and say, I'm going to go and do this five minute breath work. That's yes. an option. But if you need it fast and you need instant relief, I would do that breath work. It does work. That's awesome. I like that a lot. Now, if you had to take everything we learned today, what are some important takeaways that you'd like to emphasize to the listeners, the listeners who struggle on a day-to-day -day basis, trying to reach that state of calmness, people who suffer from anxiety, stress, panic attacks, getting emotional really quickly because they're already built up with emotions that really needed to get out in the first place and they're still repressed and but they still believe in you know they still want to they believe in breath work they know it will help them they want to find a state of calmness and you know so what are some of the takeaways because we went over all these things today is there special things you'd like to emphasize to these people who know breathing is you know breathing techniques are the way to change and transform your life you know one of the ways and meditation is one of the ways what are some good things that you'd like to emphasize from this conversation that yeah. you think will be helpful another great question you want to be in a state of expansion instead of contraction. Mm -hmm. And I think we all know what that is. When you're open, yeah, like open and your heart, like when we go like this and our shoulders are forward and we're upset or we're angry or things didn't go our way, everything goes like this. Yes. So if you can even wake up in the morning and you're like, ah, I got to take the dog out oh my God, there's no coffee and I don't have any gas in my car and I got to be there in five minutes. Oh. <laughs> you could just say, open, expand, take a deep breath, sigh and say, I'm just going to do what I can. Yes. And the affirmation is one step at a time. Yes. I'm going to breathe. I'm going to stay open. There's lots of different ways. I'm trying to see what ra what radiates radiates with you or with the listeners. I just say when I get overwhelmed, I say, "Open, Sherry. Open your heart. Yes. Take a deep breath and gratitude. One right. thing I'm thankful for right now. Yes. And I usually I'm like you know here I am worried about all these external things. Yes. And now when I, when I take a deep breath, fill my heart with love, go inside internally and mm -hmm. say, what am I thankful for? I almost, I smile. And I'm like, what a silly girl I am. Cause yeah. I have, you know, we have so much. You do. 
we do everyone at every level has something to be yes. thankful for. Hundred percent. The more you look at that, the more you'll see. Yes. The more you look at the things you don't have, yes. the more you'll see that too. So it is not to be a poly Annie of life is wonderful and I'm so happy. It's truly like I'm alive today. Yeah. And what one thing I can do to maybe make and add a little more happiness and joy talking to a friend, going out in nature, moving yeah. my body, drinking yeah. water, eating things, breathing, reading yeah. something inspirational, yes. joining a group, a community that understands me. Yes. When we're calm and we feel good, we'll find one of those things, playing with your dog, your children, your partner, going in the mountains, going in the beach. We'll find one of those things. Right. Passion. And then we realize how lucky we are to be alive. Yes. It's a gift and we should utilize it. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Now you have an amazing retreat and I'm very excited because I'm coming in September you now. Are. Yes, I am. I'm very excited to come. Tell people about the retreat. I want people to understand what your retreat is about. Let them know what state it's in and let them understand you know, just the things you offer and, and, and the positive outcomes and, and what it will do for you, you know, let, let, let people understand, because you have an amazing retreat. The agenda is amazing. And it's just, it's just a, a, a week of, of transformation and, and, and just renewing yourself and really going deep down into yourself finding the new you or maybe the lost you that you once had and life took over and you lost the sense of who you are, you know, whatever everybody, everyone has a different, different, you know, different life, different scenario, different case, but whatever it may be, it's like a reset when you go to your yes. retreat. So explain uh, to people what it's about. Uh, well, thank you, Stacey. So Red House Wellness is located in the beautiful, majestic mountains of Park City, Utah. And if you haven't been there with Stacey, you've not been to Park City, you are uh, yeah. in for a treat. It is just, Utah is beautiful. When you look at mountains, you see that you can. Impossible becomes possible. And at Red House Wellness, we want you to discover your full body health and personal empowerment by mastering the mind and realizing you can live in a prison or you can live in a palace. Yes. And it comes from inside. So physically, we want to get you healthy. Your body's your home. We want you to see how to take care of it. We want you to stand straight, shoulders back. People get upset and angry and they don't feel good and tired and they slump. We want your yes. shoulders down your back. We want you to stand up. We want to show you how to eat, when to eat, what to exercise. We minimize that so you could literally exercise do your meditation, do your breathing. We teach you a morning routine. I call it a life saver. And the saver is silence, affirmation, visualization, exercise, and reading. And we can do that. We show you, we teach you, we help you come up with what works with you within five to 10 minutes. So yeah. you start your day. That's what you do when you wake up. So whatever happens out there, you're like, I know that whatever happens, I can handle because I set my day up. Right. And then emotional freedom, not taking everything so personally. You know, mm -hmm. everybody has their own agenda. People yes. aren't even thinking about us. You know, we don't <laughs> realize and we take things so personally and we yeah. get hurt. And I want to show you at Red House Wellness how to heal from that. Yeah. How to let that go and to get what you need inside and not look outside for validation. Yes. And mentally realizing you always have a choice with your words, your actions, your deeds. Mentally, there's six perspectives. So we just need to help you say that if you think life is hard and unfair and people are mean, Think about what's going to happen today. Or if yeah. you think life is magical and people are good and you're powerful and your higher power wants you to go out and laugh and have fun, what yeah. kind of a day are you going to have? 
Yes. And then spiritually, like I said before, Stacy, we are born with these gifts and these talents. You have yours by doing these podcasts and all the other amazing things you do. I have my gifts. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like if you don't utilize them, we say to our creator, no, thank you. I'm yeah. not, it's, it's like a waste. I don't want to. It is our responsibility to say it thank is. you for giving yeah. me this and yes. let me go out and share and serve and help. So we want you to take back your power and yes. realize that life should be joyful and yes. happy. And it will be challenging at times. It will be sad. It will be difficult. Don't get me wrong. Right. If we can see though, the gifts that come from that, I, my dear friend was riding her bicycle and fell off and broke her, um, her elbow. Mm. And I sat with her and I said, let's look at a gift or something good. And she said, Sherry, I have not sat down in the last three weeks. <laughs> and now because of my elbow, she has to let it, she can't get surgery for two weeks because of the swelling. She goes, I'm just going to be and read and be with my friends right? and breathe more and be more. So yeah. sometimes things happen. And if you could right. look in the good of it, instead of being upset and mad, it shifts and it's joyful. So yes. she was like, okay, I got it. I wasn't taking care of myself. I wasn't giving myself the rest that I needed. Yes. And that's what happened. So exactly. we want you to shift your perspective, perspective that whatever happens, yes. as it will, we can handle it. If yes. we show up for ourselves, with yes. breathing, meditation, setting the day up, doing your morning practice, thoughts become things, affirmations. We show you all that, what you eat, how you eat, how you exercise in a very compact way that you have so much time then to live your life with more passion and more purpose. I love it. And I can't wait to come. I and when wait I wait to see what you see when you get here and then when yes. you experience it here and then when you leave. And I'm going to be documenting everything and I'm going to be putting it all over the internet because I want people to see the amazing um, services and amazing tools and techniques you teach because you know what, it's so valuable. And, you know, some people, you know, don't take the time to give themselves a little self-care. Sometimes we just have to step back and give ourselves some days to renew. And I love retreats like yours because it's different. It's not, you're not, you're not going there to get a pedicure and you're not going there to get a suntan. We're going there to go deep inside ourselves and to fix and, and renew ourselves and to bring the best out of ourselves and to fix the things that pull us down. And those repressed emotions, those fears, those unhealthy thoughts, we learn how to let go and how to tackle them and then let them go. And to do that, you become a completely new, different person. And everybody, you know, you need time. Every year someone should do something like this because every year, you know, people get bombarded with life and obstacles and stress and this and that. And you constantly need to give yourself self-love and self-care. And imagine if you learned all these techniques and you can make them part of your lifestyle and then you could completely incorporate it where it becomes so natural that you're doing it all the time. You've created a whole new person. And it's an amazing feeling when you start to live life differently and you start to do different techniques. Like I don't even realize when I'm, I'm doing the techniques that I, I've incorporated and learned throughout my life because I've done them so much. They're just natural, but the habit you've created yes. your habit, Stacy. Yes, yes. I created my habit, but it's always good to learn. You can never learn enough. You can't say I know it because every day I learn something new. And it's amazing because sometimes, you know, when you learn things from a different angle or different perspective, it can be so much more effective and you just didn't even realize it. So it's great to go on these retreats. And then you, you get to like for your retreat, you get to meet other women and you get to bond and you get to, you know, see the things you have in common. It's all positive energy. And when you feel that positive energy, when you're in the room, you have a bunch of women who are there to make 
themselves feel good and be and better themselves. And that's a that's a powerful source of energy, you know, and that's something that I just love because when I go into a room with positive people, I could feel that positiveness. And then when I walk out of the room, I that positiveness stays with me and I feel like I can clean the house seven times <laughs> over. You know, it's just that it just gives you just an, an array of energy. You know, it, it's a great feeling because so many people, especially moms, I see that they they feel guilty or, or they feel ashamed to put themselves first before their children or their spouse or partner. And they shouldn't, because how can we help others unless we help ourselves first? Well said. Transform the world world by transforming yourself. We must <sighs> self-care first. Now tell everybody where they can find your retreat and where they can find your website. Yeah, so it's info at redhousewellness.com. And we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. Um, just look, Google Red House Wellness Park City, Utah, and you'll find all the different channels and you can speak to me. I want to make sure you're going to get more than what you're looking for in a retreat. So I, it's a lot of energy. It's a lot of time. It costs money. And I want to make sure that you are going to get everything and more. You'll leave lighter and wiser in every dimension. And like you said, learning and growing is what life's all about. Yes. We should yes. all be in that state of what can I learn today? How can I be more curious and ask different questions so that yes. I can see a different perspective? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Sherry, this has been amazing. I love when you come on. You give me energy. I feel so good every time I talk to you. I get excited every time I see that I, I'm going to have a podcast with you and, and we're going to do your podcast series together. I just get so excited because you just have such a, a positive just warm, caring personality. And it just, it's, you shine and you can feel it when I, we talk to you, when I, I talk to you and, and I'm sure people see that too. And it's just great to have somebody like you on the planet and someone with a purpose that's trying to help others. And I commend you for that. And I just adore you. I really do. And I, Thank you for everything you do. And I appreciate you. And thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. You're just amazing. Thank you, Stacey. I feel the same about you. You couldn't see the beauty in me if you didn't have it in you. I truly believe <laughs> that. So it's a mirror effect. So everything you said to me is bouncing back to you. Uh, <laughs> namaste. Uh, namaste. Namaste. <laughs>